Now let's talk about echoes. An echo is a repeated sound heard after an interval of silence. It is produced by the reflection of sound by large, smooth and hard surfaces. And reverberation is the effect of prolonged sound due to the merging of echoes with the original sound. For example, if you clap your hands near a high wall, you might be able to hear reverberation. Too much reverberation can cause musical sounds and voices to become indistinct. Sometimes you may hear this if you go to concert halls with large amplifiers like this. If you stand at the wrong spot, you're not really enjoying the music because it won't be sharp and clean. However, too little reverberation causes the musical sounds and voices to appear weak. Then the sound won't have the kick that you might be looking for. And so it comes to the question, does anyone sing in the bathroom? If you ever tried singing in the bathroom, you would have noticed that your singing voice actually appears to have improved tremendously. And then when you come out of the bathroom and you try to sing in let's say a larger area, suddenly your singing voice seems to be less impressive. This is because the bathroom is a small enclosed space and therefore there will be quite a lot of reverberation. This would make your voice sound stronger and more attractive. Now, there are some uses for echoes. The first one is by animals. Animals like bats can use echo location to find the distance and direction of objects. Basically, they make a high pitched noise like tick or click. And then what happens is that the sound goes over to let's say objects and it bounces off the object and the bat hears it again. This gives the bat a rough idea of how far an object is. This is quite important because this allows bats to fly in the dark and bats do not have very good eyesight as well. The next use for sound waves is the ultrasound. Ultrasound cannot be heard because it is a sound that has a much higher frequency than humans can hear, but it has many medical and commercial uses. For example, ultrasound scanning can be used for pregnant women to check the development of the fetus. Normally, for people that are not pregnant, we will use an X-ray to check inside our body to take a look at what's inside. However, X-rays are dangerous for use with pregnant women because it may affect the fetus. So, the ultrasound is used over here. Based on the vibrations of the ultrasound through the body, they can actually produce a picture based on the bouncing back of sound waves back to the ultrasound. This can also be used to check for cancer growth. The next use for ultrasound would be for boats, commonly called sonar using ultrasound to locate underwater objects. For example, a fishing boat might want to know whether they are above shoals of fish because they want to throw their nets where they can catch the most fish. So they will use an ultrasound below the boat to send sonar waves downwards. If there are no fish, the sound would go down, hit the bottom of the sea floor and bounce back to the boat, moving a longer distance and therefore taking a longer time. So the fishing boat would know that there is no fish there. However, once there is a shoal of fish, the sound waves would go down and bounce off the shoal of fish and it will bounce back to the boat. And so the boat will think, hey, how come I'm getting back my sonar wave much faster than I expected? And therefore they will know that there might be a shoal of fish below. The sound can also be used in cleaning of small intricate items like jewelry, spectacles and small machine parts. This is a common calculation example used in examinations. A sound wave is emitted downwards from a ship. It is reflected from the seabed and it goes back to the ship. The time between emitting the sound wave and detecting it back is 0.25 seconds and the seabed is 180 meters below the ship. Calculate the speed of sound in seawater. Please pause the video here and try to solve this. Okay, now let's go through the answer. The distance the sound wave has to travel is 180 times 2 because it has to bounce off the seabed and go back. Therefore, the total distance traveled is 360 meters. Speed is equal to distance divided by time. Distance is 360 divided by the time of 0.25 seconds gets you a speed of 1440 meters per second. And that will be the speed of sound in seawater.